Hello everybody, I'm so pleased and proud to be here again at the Shanghai Blockchain Conference. Since I was last here, the internet computer has successfully launched. It underwent the genesis on the 10th of May earlier this year. And I'm pleased to tell you that it's been scaling out its capacity as we promised it would. And hundreds of blockchain developers are now building dApps and services on the internet computer blockchain. So, for those of you who are new to the Internet Computer Project, we're pursuing a mission of blockchain singularity, which I'll explain a little bit more um, in a few moments. So, my name is uh, Dominic Williams, and I'm President and Chief Scientist of the Divinity Foundation. We're actually blockchain's largest R&D effort, and we employ more leading cryptographers and crypto engineers than any other organization in tech. We're about 200 strong, and um, we draw people from all kinds of backgrounds, you know, major tech organizations. I think Google's our biggest previous employer. Lots of people from crypto, and a lot of people from, from academia. And we um, run several in international research centers. I'm actually talking to you from one, and uh, also lots of remote teams. Um, there's also um, some other not-for-profit organizations joined in the fray. And one, one of them is the Internet Computer Association. And you're going to be hearing more and more from that next year. It, its purpose is to support node operators, developers, businesses, entrepreneurs, investors, researchers, educators, and governments, and advocate for the Internet Computer community. Now, all of us are pursuing this mission of blockchain singularity. Blockchain singularity is the migration of all of humanity's systems and services to public blockchain, where they'll be re-implemented using smart contract software. As I mentioned, the Internet Computer underwent Genesis 10th and late this year, and is now scaling out its capacity so that we can make a blockchain singularity possible. So I'll give you some, some quick stats. Um, it's already processed about 275 million blocks. It's processing blocks at a rate of about 25 a second, but we can expect that to grow to hundreds a second, thousands a second, and then one day maybe millions a second. It's already making available 600 terabytes of memory for smart contract data storage. It has more than 20,000 CPUs processing smart contract computations, and the internet computer is self-governed by a thing called the network nervous system, and that thing has processed 26,000 proposals already. So things are really moving. So before we talk about some of the things that the internet computer blockchain can do, let's think for a moment about some of the challenges in today's blockchain space. One of the major challenges is that blockchain architectures are just far too complex. So let's think about how Ethereum dApps work for now, um, by way of example. So when you interact with an Ethereum dApp, typically you're actually interacting with a website hosted on Amazon Web Services, a cloud infrastructure. That website does most of the heavy duty computation and data storage and just makes a few calls to the Ethereum blockchain on the back end. In order to interact with the data in a meaningful way, you need to have an ETH wallet. Typically, you need to download that from the Chrome Web Store, and it'll work as a Chrome extension that integrates with your web browser. Now, before you can use it, you need to load it with some ETH. Typically, you will acquire that on the cryptocurrency exchange and send it to your wallet, such as MetaMask. Now, when you interact with the uh, DAP, um, you know, you can go from page to page, but when you actually need to do something that will cause an action on the blockchain, you have to configure a transaction. And that's because you need to pay for the smart contract computation that's going to take place. So, all of this presents a number of problems. 
First of all, the requirement that the user must have some ETH cryptocurrency creates an enormous barrier to entry. Second, the need for the user to configure transactions to pay for the computation on Ethereum when they perform certain actions actually creates a lot of friction in the user experience. Lastly, this architecture presents some serious security difficulties. First of all, the user had to trust that nobody at Google had maliciously modified the code of their MetaMask wallet. If that was the case, the malicious changes would result in ETH cryptocurrency being lost. The user doesn't really have any way of knowing that their interactions with the website actually result um, in actions on the blockchain. They can check it out on the block explorer, but most users aren't technical enough to be, to be able to do that. The user has to trust that the website running on Amazon Web Services hasn't been um, hacked and isn't going to do something bad. Lastly, the danger exists that Amazon Web Services will censor the data. And we know that last year, during the uh, US election, um, Amazon Web Services actually closed down a social media service called Parler. And they're very capable of closing down dApps. Okay, so we can see there are some major problems with the way dApps are created today. So the internet computer blockchain is created by an open protocol called ICP, or Internet Computer Protocol. That's where the ICP token gets its name. The ICP protocol is very advanced and uses a lot of completely new cryptography that makes it possible for the internet computer to realize the world computer dream. On the internet computer, smart contract software can be used to build absolutely anything. Web3 dApps, SocialFi, GameFi, DeFi, NFTs, and even traditional websites and enterprise systems. Enterprise systems. And all without any need to use cloud computing infrastructure such as Amazon Web Services. An interesting aspect of the internet computer blockchain is that it runs entirely from a sovereign physical layer. That means that the node computers that host the internet computer blockchain are dedicated to the task and no cloud computing, computing infrastructure is involved whatsoever. So the internet computer blockchain hosts dApps and smart contracts on subnet blockchains within the overall network. These subnet blockchains are created by node machines, which are run by independent operator owners. These node machines, of course, are situated within independent data centers around the world. To give you an idea of where we're heading, we believe in 10 years you will see billions of dApps and contracts on the internet computer, thousands of subnet blockchains, and millions of node machines running from thousands of data centers around the world. The internet computer hosts a new breed of advanced smart contracts called canister smart contracts. Canisters are a bundle of WebAssembly bytecode and persistent memory pages. Each canister smart contract is what is known as a software actor. This makes it possible for the internet computer to run vast numbers of canister smart contracts in power and to do so in a deterministic way. And that's why it's able to scale out capacity so that it can process any volume of smart contract computation and data required. Today, the internet computer is the only blockchain in the world that is aiming to host smart contracts um, using the actor model. And it's actually fundamental to the way it approaches the problem of blockchain singularity.
Developers can build on the internet computer in a much simpler way. They simply need to upload Canvas smart contracts to the internet computer, and that's sufficient to build all manner of highly sophisticated, decentralized systems and services. On the internet computer, Canvas smart contracts can serve interactive web content directly to end users without intermediaries. Canvas to smart contracts also pay for their own computation, which means that end users don't have to hold tokens to pay for computation and can use dApps on the internet computer without first acquiring tokens and putting them into a token wallet. Moreover, users can authenticate themselves to dApps on the internet computer using a system called Internet Identity. Internet Identity enables them to create anonymous user anchors which they can assign their devices to as a means of authentication. So for example, I've created an internet identity anchor to which I've assigned a fingerprint sensor on my MacBook, the face ID on my phone, and some Uber keys as a backup. This model means that Web3 apps can run directly from each other they're more user-friendly, and they provide end-to-end -end security for the first time. Naturally, in order to fulfill this role, the internet computer has to have incredible speed. By way of example, the internet computer can finalize transactions that update state in about two seconds, and perform transactions that just query state in just milliseconds. By comparison, Bitcoin takes about 40 minutes to finalize transactions that update state. Ethereum takes about 15 minutes. Cardano takes about 2 minutes. And Solana takes about 16 seconds. And the internet computer is able to achieve this incredible speed with a sovereign physical network and without any use of cloud computing infrastructure. Another important aspect of the internet computer is that the cost of on-chain computation approaches the cost of computation on traditional IT. The reason for this is that the network can scale out its capacity as needed. By contrast, on traditional blockchains, there's only a fixed amount of capacity. This means that traditional blockchains have to auction access to that fixed capacity. And as demand increases, so does the cost of computation. The internet computer works very differently. When the demand for the fixed capacity increases, the internet computer increases the capacity available. And this enables it to um, prevent people bidding up the cost of computation, keep the cost of um, computation constant, and, and, and keep it low too. So for example, on Ethereum today, the cost of one gigabyte of smart contract data can cost you upwards of $250 million. By contrast, on the internet computer blockchain, one gigabyte of smart contract data can cost you as little as $5 a year. And this is what makes it possible to build even a social network on the internet computer. Because of the amazing new capabilities of the internet computer blockchain, internet computer developers are pioneering some really important new trends. These include SocialFi, the Metaverse, and GameFi. SocialFi blends social media functionality with DeFi functionality. In the future, the users of dApps, and of course SocialFi dApps, are going to become the owners of the dApps, and part of the team that runs them. We're also going to see DeFi functionality blending with traditional social media. So in the future, for example, a decentralized chat service might also double as a wallet. That means that you can send cryptocurrency 
with individual chat messages. It also means that you'll do things like notarize and sign documents using chat messages, or negotiate for NFTs and have atomic transfers take place. Social Fi is going to completely change how we think about both social media and DeFi. Meanwhile, GameFi will transform gaming. On the blockchain, true play to earn comes possible. Imagine an online great multiplayer racing game in which everyone pays into a pot to participate and the winner wins the pot. That kind of thing is the future and it's going to be absolutely huge. Socialify and Gamify, of course, are going to blend in to the metaverse, which has already been built out on the internet computer by some very notable creators. In the future, on blockchain, all of these things are going to exist on a continuum, and it's incredibly exciting to see how all this unfolds. Finally, I want to talk about some very exciting developments with the internet computer protocol itself. It's no secret that the Internet Computer Protocol is powered by something called Chain Key Cryptography, which is completely new and was developed by um, cryptographers working at the Definitive Foundation. Chain Key Cryptography is what enables the Internet Computer to run so fast and to scale out its capacity. It's also going to enable the integration of the Internet Computer Network with the Bitcoin. This means that smart contracts on the internet computer will gain their own Bitcoin addresses and will be able to send and receive Bitcoin on the Bitcoin blockchain, rather like Ethereum smart contracts have their own Ether address and can send and receive Ether on the Ethereum blockchain. This is extraordinarily exciting and will enable the creation of a new generation of DeFi that runs effectively on Bitcoin. It's also going to provide today one and a half trillion dollars of liquidity for the internet computer blockchain. This is probably one of the most um, incredible developments that have been uh, enabled within blockchain using new cryptography. And um, you know, I, I invite everybody to find out more and, and watch what happens. We think um, the integration will happen um, early next year in, in just over a few months. So, um, people have also been asking, are we going to use um, the same technology to integrate with Ethereum? Um, please to tell you that we are. Once we've delivered the Bitcoin integration, we move on to Ethereum. That's going to mean that canister smart contracts on the internet computer are going to be able to call into smart contracts on Ethereum, and smart contracts on Ethereum are going to be able to call back in to internet computers, canister smart contracts. This is going to really enable um, the Ethereum ecosystem to um, solve some of the problems that we talked about earlier. So, for example, um, D DeFi applications running on Ethereum will be able to use the internet computer to create secure blockchain-based um, user experiences and also to store you know, data and form of heavy computations um, on a blockchain that they can remove from the Amazon web services. So that's incredibly exciting too. Okay, um, I think that's it for me today. Um, I wish everyone the, the very best and um, I hope you enjoy um, the, the rest of your conference here. Um, if you want to find out more about the Internet Computer Project, um, I invite you to go to affinity.org or to internetcomputer.org or to smartcontracts.org. Okay, thanks. Bye everyone.